Antibrids are one of my very favorite types of tricks to play with with double staves, but they come with a bit of a problem. Namely, when we play around with most double staff tricks, they involve having the hands either an entire staff's length apart or straight together. When we play around with antibrids, we have to have our hands a half of the staff's length apart. So the challenge becomes finding transitions that allow us to switch back and forth between each of these different distances. Thus far, I've been able to find four of them. The first method I've found is also the easiest, and that involves just using a simple translation. That is, sliding the staff back and forth along a particular axis, right? Now, the easiest answer would simply be to slide one of the staffs over a half of the staff's length and use that to set ourselves up for doing an anti-brid. Slide it right back, and we're back to where we would want to be in order to perform standard unit circle moves again. Now, the thing is, I think this looks really clunky, and I think there are a lot more visually appealing ways to do these kinds of transitions. Another option if we want to stick with translations is to do one out of this hybrid right here, where my hands are going together same while my staves are performing isolation versus anti-spin. In this move, I'm going to stop on one of the quarters right here. And as you can see, my staves are now arranged in an X. I'm going to translate one of my hands up the length of the other staff so that it meets up with the end of the staff. From here, I can switch into my standard anti-brid very, very easily. To get back out of it, I stop at exactly the same spot, and I translate my hand back down to meet my other hand. Once again, I'm back in this X shape. Now I can just switch back into the hybrid that I started with. One quick note about this. I think one thing that makes this look a lot better is if you keep the same hand performing both isolation as well as reels as you go back and forth between the two types of hybrids. The reason for this is it keeps some measure of continuity in terms of which hand is doing anti-spin. Now, this is a much better looking transition than the first translation that we looked at, but I think we can still do better. Another useful tool for making these types of transitions involves cat eyes. Cat eyes are a staff move in which one end of the staff moves back and forth along a straight line that is as long as the staff is itself. This results in the other end of the staff creating a long, wide ellipse. With this trick in our tool belt, performing a transition to antibrids is just a simple matter of math. That is, if I perform a quarter of a cat eye, I've moved both ends of the staff essentially one half of a staff's length in either direction. If I perform one quarter of any unit circle move, be it isolation or anti-spin, I've moved an end of the staff one full staff's length, meaning it now has a staff's length between it and the end of the other staff. This works whether they start together or they start apart, and the result is a perfect lineup for an anti-brid. Our next option for transitions involves crossers. That is, these moves right here where we're performing shoulder reels with our arms crossed. Now, on either side of our body, we're working in a position that matches up perfectly with the unit circle. That is, we're working through a central axis of rotation that's essentially at our body's center. But something different happens halfway through that turn. Namely, because our hands are at each of our shoulders, we've now forced a distance between them. That, as it turns out, is exactly the same distance that we need for anti-brids. That is, it's a half of a staff's length, and a perfect opportunity for us to transition into them. Now, all we have to do to get back and forth between them is to turn the staves a quarter turn, which is really handy. It may be tempting to rotate the staves in opposite directions, since that's what we're already working with, but it'll put you in a position where one hand cannot perform a shoulder reel. Instead, make sure the pinky ends point towards each other, and you should have no problems performing shoulder reels with either hand. One other quick note is after you complete that quarter rotation, you want to make sure that whichever hand is on top is also the hand that you use for your shoulder reel as you're getting into your first anti-brid. Otherwise, what you'll find is there's a really awkward reach that you have to do in order to get the anti-spinning staff through your arms. Just start with the one on top. It's easier. Our final option for transitions comes out of grid tracing, which is one of my favorite frameworks for double staff tricks currently. We're going to want to start in what I'd more or less consider to be the home base for grid tracing. That is, having our hands here in front of our waist with the pinky ends pointed back towards their native elbows, right? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to isolate around in a clockwise direction so my right hand thumb end winds up pointed up and my left hand thumb end is pointed down towards the floor. From here, I'm going to switch from isolation to cat eye and I'm going to bring those two pinky ends inwards towards each other so that they overlap. 
Now, this is the right distance for antibrids, but unfortunately, it's the wrong ends. We like having the pinky ends overlapping when they're up at our shoulders. When they're at our waists, we want to have the thumb ends pointed towards each other. So, I'm going to go back to my cat eyes, and I'm going to switch it around so that I have my left hand thumb end up, my right hand thumb end down, and I'm going to continue performing my cat eyes until I bring my two thumb ends together, pointed at each other, overlapping, and I can switch back into my antibrids. To get back out of this, of course, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go back into our cat eyes. And from here, we can actually just isolate all the way back around to get back to our original lineup to perform our grid tracers once again. While this transition looks pretty cool, we're actually fudging it a little bit to make it work. This is because if we take our math from where we learned about cat eyes, we'll discover that as these two cat eyes move towards each other, they only move a half of a staff's length towards each other. Now, remember, we started off with the staves completely overlapping, so this means that the ends would just meet each other. They would not actually overlap. Thus, in order to make this work, we're essentially fudging about a quarter of the staff length in order to get them to overlap the way we want them to. Now, the thing is, most people actually can't tell the difference, and I think that this is one of the prettiest transitions that we have for getting into antibrids, so don't stress it out that this one is not precise. Do you have methods for getting into antibrids that I didn't cover in this video? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to do a follow-up video with even more transitions. Thank you guys so much for watching and enjoy the flow. Peace. This video right here was made thanks to the kind contributions of these folks right here. They found me at patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and signed up to make a contribution every month. By doing so, they got access to a whole bunch of extra footage from the videos that I put out every month, plus which a number of really awesome rewards. If you or anybody that you know has learned something from one of the videos that I've put out, please consider going to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and signing up to be a supporter. Thank you.